What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back to break down week four on DraftKings. This is the early look, recording this on Tuesday, September 25th. Gonna be looking at position by position, going over, talking about what I see, what I like, and going from there. So the first thing here at quarterback, all the quarterbacks look to be depressed about $400. Um, we don't have any 7K quarterbacks. There's no Patrick Mahomes on this slate. So I don't know exactly what he would have been, but no Patrick Mahomes on this slate. Ryan Fitzmagic is on this slate, and he only got priced up to 6200 I know he's facing the Bears defense. But my dude Fitzmagic has thrown for 400 yards in four straight games, or in three straight games. I think I'll play him in GPPs. Like, we'll do a little GPP lineup here, and I'll talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, but we'll start off at the top with Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Drew Brees. So, starting off at the very top with Aaron Rodgers, he's. I, I don't think I'll play him this week against Buffalo. I think they get up early. I don't think Josh Allen is going to destroy the Packers like he did the Vikings. Um... And so I think they'll get up, and I think it limits Rodgers' upside, and at 6,800, I don't think you need it. I rarely ever play Tom Brady in cash. I just think with the Patriots, it's hard to tell. Sometimes Tom Brady will get him to the one, and they'll just run it in. And because they care about like they care about winning football games, so if that means running the ball 50 times in a game, they're going to do it to win. And so I just don't ever really play Tom Brady in cash. Drew Brees, I don't love him outside of the dome, and so I probably won't play him this week. Phillip Rivers is the first quarterback that I have interest in. People are going to go to Deshaun Watson. He hasn't had a good game yet. He's looked awful, but he continues to put up fantasy points, which is nice. But I think I would go with Phillip Rivers before Deshaun Watson. Like I said, we're going to do a GPP build here, so I'm going to put in my boy Ryan Fitzpatrick, and I'll show you why. So, if you look at his game logs... He has thrown 28 times in the New Orleans game, in which he was super efficient throwing it deep. Had he not been efficient throwing it deep, it would have been a higher passing total. In the Philly game, he was a little bit a little bit less efficient, but he did have a couple of bombs, which definitely helps you lower the attempts. And then against Pittsburgh, in a game that they were losing, he put up 50 attempts and had 30 completions. They don't have a running game, so if they're not quick striking, he's going to have to throw it. He has a little bit of rushing upside, let's be honest, not a whole lot. But he's going to get you a couple points rushing, mate, probably. That's what you're hoping for, three or four points rushing. If he finds the end zone, all the better. And he's only 6,200. So in GPPs, I love Ryan Fitzpatrick. People aren't going to want to play him. 6,200, they're just going to go to Phillip Rivers, Deshaun Watson, or Matt Ryan. Which I like all of those guys in ca in cash more than than Fitzpatrick. Um, I like Ryan again this week at 6,100 um, against Cincinnati. I'm not sure if I'll play him, but he's definitely in the consideration. The next person I have interest in, I know 5,700 for Matt Stafford sounds really good, but Dallas plays at a slow pace, and so I don't think I'll have any interest in Stafford. I really like Russ Wilson this week. He's only 5,600. He has that rushing upside. It's against a bad Arizona team. Um... And so I think Russ has a little bit of upside this week. Not sure he's cash viable, but I do like him. Next quarterback I like is Andy Dalton. Currently, he's in my shell cash game lineup. I do really like Andy Dalton this week. It's in a dome. Should be probably a shootout down there in Atlanta. And so I do like myself some Andy Dalton. Moving down even farther, if you want to just punt this straight to the edge of the earth, Sam Darnold and CJ Beathard are fine. Beathard is going to get his first start. Uh, they're both facing hard defenses in the Chargers and the Jags, but uh, at 46 and 4,500, I don't despise it, but uh, not the greatest matchups. Let's let's just say that. Not the greatest matchups, and uh, the, in this week, with the depressed quarterback pricing, I'm not sure you'll need him. I did like Josh Allen a bit last week. I actually had a cash game lineup with him for like three hours, and then, then I decided it wasn't worth it, and I'm kind of happy because he actually didn't score that many. I mean, technically, Matt Ryan crushed him. I mean, he did really good for 4500 but Matt Ryan still absolutely destroyed him for $1,200 more. Moving on to running back. At the top, we've got Alvin Kamara, Melvin Gordon, and Saquon Barkley. 
my favorite out of these is Kamara, but I think for the $1,300 salary saving, Melvin Gordon is a perfectly fine play. Saquon is going to get talked up this week against New Orleans. I'm not sure I want to pay $8,100 for Saquon Barkley. And so then we end up in we end up in the six thousands range, and then guess who's sitting there for us? David Johnson against the Seahawks. C.J. Beathard in it or no, not C.J. Ooh, Josh Rosen in at quarterback, and I'm not sure what to make of it. What is Josh Rosen's price? I wanted to mention him too. He should have been cheap. Where is Josh? Yeah, Josh Rosen's 4,500. So he's also an option. He's also an option if you need a massive salary saver. I completely forgot about him. Uh, but David Johnson, David Johnson, 6,600. If you're not gonna play him in cash, you gotta play him in GPPs. 6,600 for the second best running back in the NFL, third best running back in the NFL, all or third best all around running back talent in the NFL. I understand the stats aren't good this year. His team is terrible. But at 6,600, my dude David Johnson has been getting no workload. And he's kind of almost got to value two out of the three weeks. I mean, the Rams beat him 34 to nothing. How much work do you really think he's going to have in a game that they got shellac 34 to nothing? And to be fair, in week one, while he did score the touchdown, they had such a terrible time of possession. I can't really fault him for that. So week three is probably the expectation with more targets. They still need to get him more targets, and he needs to rush the ball more than 12 times. But for 6,600, I don't think it's getting cute. It's hard. I don't think it's getting too cute. But I don't think his ownership's going to be there to make it worth it. It's kind of hard. I don't know exactly what to do with him. It's really hard. I think he gets the volume with C.J. Beathard. I think they're going to try to run it a little bit more. I think C.J. Beathard will dump it off a little bit more. C.J. Why do I keep saying C.J. Beathard? Josh Rosen. They'll try to run it a little bit more with Josh Rosen. They'll dump it off a little bit more with Josh Rosen. So I, I like David Johnson. I liked him last week. I loved him last week. Gio Bernard at 6300 minimal price increase and he should be in a shootout this week against Atlanta who loves to loves to loves to allow you to check that ball down so if you don't play Gio Bernard this week I don't know what you're doing with your life like unless like three 3k crappers open up for you to take at running back if you do not play Gio Bernard this week I I'm gonna hammer this every single video that I do I'm playing Gio Bernard in cash GPPs everything it, it doesn't matter i'm 100 percent geo bernard i don't care you have seen what has occurred the last two weeks against atlanta the panthers threw the ball 15 times to christian mccaffrey he caught 14 of them how many did kamara have last week it was a high amount kamara had 15 receptions 20 targets i mean if you do not play Gio Bernard, Gio Bernard is just a poor man's Kamara and, and McCaffrey. He just catches, he's a receiving back. I don't know what else I can tell you about that. If you don't play Gio Bernard this week, you're just paying the rake. You are paying the rake if you do not play Gio Bernard this week. He's the lock of all locks. If you do not play Gio Bernard this week, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Matt Breida, next up on the list at oh no never mind tevin coleman next up on the list at 5900 uh Devontae freeman is questionable we're gonna assume he plays they said two to three weeks it's been two weeks um we don't have any update from him he's just questionable um which is a good sign that he got upgraded to questionable i think he plays which takes tevin coleman off the board if he doesn't play i don't know if i play tevin coleman but uh I still like him. He's 5,900. That's a good deal. Matt Breida is next, and I think he's going to be the the uh, the GPP play that we play in this lineup. Good old Matt Breida. If you look at C.J. Beathard last year with uh, Carlos Hyde, Beathard loved Carlos Hyde. He loved dropping the ball off to Carlos Hyde, and uh, Beathard, I believe, I believe Hyde was like the highest targeted running back for those weeks, and he was even higher targeted like than a lot of than most receivers he was getting like double digit targets it was it, it was like a crazy level of ridiculous 
Speaking of Carlos Hyde, Carlos Hyde is our next person we'll talk about here at 5,500 against the Oakland Raiders. He's had two games in which he's gotten 20 uh, rushing attempts and one game where he got 16 attempts. Found the end zone in all of them. Um, with Baker Mayfield in at quarterback, I think they might try to run it a little bit more. Give Carlos Hyde. I think Carlos Hyde is a lock for 20 touches. Now, what he does with those 20 touches is another story. For cash games, I really like Lamar Miller. Uh, game in the dome. Starting running back, only 5K. Seeing about 15 to 20 touches per game. Probably going to have to find the end zone for you because he has not been... He was efficient the first two weeks rushing. He was not efficient last week. Um... But I don't think I would expect the five receptions against Indy. But you're hoping for 14 to 20 t rushes, three to four catches, and a touchdown. And he, he'll get there. I'm not sure if I'll play Lamar Miller, but I do really love the value at 5K. I don't think all of the Eagles running backs sit out again, so I'm not playing Corey Clement. I'm not playing Corey Clement, period, probably. Um, Is there anybody else down here? do not think so i guess wilkins we can talk about wilkins real quick if all those guys if if marlon mack is out again for the colts you could consider wilkins he didn't see a whole lot of touches and he didn't see a whole lot of targets but uh he's 3900 you could look at him maybe not in cash but you could look at him uh Bilal powell is interesting for the jets um he rushed a lot last week. He didn't see the receiving volume that we're used to seeing for Bilal Paul, but he did rush a lot for 73 yards. I'm not sure I want to play him in, like, cash or anything because he kind of needs a touchdown, but I like I do like Paul at 3,800. Let's go ahead and move on to wide receiver. Up top, we got Michael Thomas against the New York Giants. I'm going to need to do some study and make sure Jadoris Jenkins isn't going to be on him. Otherwise, Michael Thomas, top option on the slate at wide receiver, garnering 17, 13, and 10 targets, calling in all but two of those targets. He has been targeted 48 times. He has 38 catches for almost 400 yards. That's exactly what you want from a wide receiver. High volumes of targets receiving a lot of those targets there are a lot of garbage targets like deandre hopkins has garbage targets he's probably been better no he's still garbage targets like 11 for 6 10 for 6 week one against patriots a little better 11 for 8 but deandre hopkins getting double digits but i'm not pay playing deandre hopkins or odell beckham over michael thomas you saw the marcus Lattimore treatment last week on julio jones odell Be beckham is going to get the marshawn Lattimore treatment Keenan Allen, I like Keenan Allen, but they've seemed to be more propensity to drop it off to the halfbacks a little bit more this year, so Keenan Allen hasn't seen his upside. I'll take the wait and see approach with Keenan Allen, especially at 8,300. Julio Jones sitting here at 8,200. Like I said, I like him for GPPs this week, so we'll go ahead and drop him into this cash lineup. Um, eventually, they're going to have to stop double and triple teaming him if if uh, Calvin Ridley and uh, if Calvin Ridley is going to keep being Calvin Ridley. Moving down the list, AJ Green is next. I'm not super happy with AJ Green's target share, 8, 9, 8. I'm just not extraordinarily happy with that. He's probably going to get Desmond Trufant a large amount of the time. Desmond Trufant doesn't travel, but he'll probably get a decent bulk of Desmond Trufant unless they purposely move him away, which I'm not sure. See, it just doesn't make any sense for me for the Falcons not to move Trufant a little bit. Like, why waste Trufant on John Ross, who's just going to run go routes every play? Uh, Landry at 7,400. I like him a lot against Oakland. He's become a little bit more of a well-rounded receiver, going a little bit deeper. As you can see, his averages used to be, like, single digits, like medium single digits. Now they're at least into the teens, and uh, I think he's, definite tar he's a definite target here uh, with 37 targets through three games uh two pretty good games and one kind of lackluster game and, and guess which week guess which week i played him oh yeah oh yeah i played him the week where he scored 11 points not one of the weeks where he scored 20 ty hilton i'm not playing him andrew luck can't throw the ball down the field so not playing him like i said with stafford i'm not playing the detroit guys just because of how dallas plays they're slow 
Will Fuller, probably too expensive for me, but it's in a dome, so maybe I will. 11 targets. 5 for 11. If he catches like 8 of those 11, he, he just absolutely explodes yesterday. The touchdown equity is kind of... He is, if, if he doesn't catch that touchdown yesterday, it was 18 points. I don't know if I'm happy. Like, I'd be happy with it. I would have taken it, but it wouldn't have saved me well, like the 24 points he got did. Uh, moving down, um, I think we're pretty much skipping the 5K range. I don't really love anybody in this. In this range, I do kind of like Corey Davis. He's been seeing a high volume of targets, uh, but, but we're living here. Kelvin Ridley, I still love him this week. He's going to be the over chalk, but I don't think it's bad chalk. He He's definitely asserted himself as the number two option. And if teams are going to continue to double and triple team Julio Jones, there's going to be option, there's going to be opportunities for Kelvin Ridley. I just think I I think he's stable for 5 to 6 targets every week. And so I think I'm willing to play Calvin Ridley this week at 4,900. If he can get me six receptions for 75 yards, he'll be close enough to value. I won't care. And I think this turns into a sneaky suit out. So I like Calvin Ridley. That also means I like Tyler Boyd on the other side. 4,600. The two chalk guys last week to save value are both in good spots again. Boyd just like Ridley, the number two option. John Ross is the number two wide receiver on the depth chart, but he just runs go routes on the outside, which leaves it open for Tyler Boyd underneath. Nine and seven targets. They should be down in this game, I would think. Playing from behind, they'll have to throw it. Tyler Boyd in the slot running short slants should be in for a good game at 4,600 against the Falcons. Other wide receivers down here. If Josh Gordon is inactive again, I do like Philip Dorsett. Chris Godwin is interesting, but I probably won't go there. He makes a nice stack with Ryan Fitzmagic, but uh, I don't think I need to go there. Quincy Inunua, it is Jacksonville, probably won't go there, but he's a nice play. Antonio Callaway with uh, Baker Mayfield in. He looked to be Baker's favorite target, and so or other than Landry, uh, so I do like Antonio Callaway. Uh, other than that, we're kind of dumpster diving, and, and I just don't really want to pull out a part of dumpster diving way down here. I mean, there are options. There are options down here, but I, I, just don't, I don't think I don't think I'm going to dumpster dive. Did Tavon Austin do anything yesterday? He actually got involved in the passing game. He, he scored a touchdown. you got to be kidding me. Uh, the point is, is, they are trying to work him in a little bit more. Three targets. I mean, he didn't get any yards, but they are working him in a little bit more. Um, Richard Higgins, Hollywood Higgins, three targets, not what you want to see. At 3,400, I think he's worth the GPP flyer to save money to spend up elsewhere. We'll move over to tight end. This is pretty easy for me. At the top, you got Gronk and Ertz. I'm not paying all the way up there. Kittle, um, Beathard loves to check it down. So if he's not checking it down to Brita, he's checking it down to Kittle. So I do like myself some Kittle. Uh, but the play I'll be going with is 3,200 David Njoku. If I have the money to get up to Kittle, I will. Let me go back to tight end. Um, I will. If I need, if I want to save a little bit, it'll be Will Disley. Um, the Dallas game is kind of what you expect from a guy like Will Disley. But uh, Will Disley, you know, he's shown some upside. Seattle doesn't have a lot of options. Pat Pete should be on Tyler Lockett, opening it up for other players. Uh, I guess they're not, I always forget this because it's so incredibly stupid, but I guess they have stopped shadowing Patrick Peterson and they made him the zone cornerback that's just stupid. Um, so maybe I, my interest in Will Disley, I keep thinking that Patrick Peterson's, you know, that lockdown shadow corner, he's going to take away your number one option every week, but he's not anymore because the Cardinals are stupid. Ricky Seals-Jones is fine. You guys have known I've touted him pretty much every week. He scored a 35-yard touchdown. He couldn't have done that, you know, last week. I don't even think I played him last, like, week two. I don't know. Who did I play week? Yeah, I did play him week two. I played him week two, I think. I, I, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not sure who I played the tight end week two. But I have, I have liked him every single week. Um, he's 2,900. He's also viable. Um, I think that's about it. I'm not... I don't think I'm going anywhere else down here. 
Nah, we'll go to defense. Let's talk defense. We got all the money in the world for defense. And so let's go over it. So we got the Jags at the very top. Can't afford the we can afford the Jags um, at 4,100 against Sam Darnold. I do really like that. And in this lineup in particular, that's who I'd go with. We just put in the Jags and be done with it. Chargers against Beathard are interesting. Packers against the Bills. I don't think I'm playing 3,500 for the Packers. But uh, there are some cheap ones, and I think my favorite is the Tennessee Titans at 2300 They've been really good this year, and uh, they're only 2300 They don't need a whole lot if they can sack Wentz once or twice, force a fumble or something, and hold them to 17 points or something like that. They looked really good against uh, the Jags, and they looked really good in Week 2 against Houston. Um, and they've been, they've been good at getting pressure. They haven't been allowing a whole lot of yards, so teams have had to be efficient against them, uh, and they've been getting turnovers. So I do like the prospect of the Titans at 2,300. They don't need anything crazy for me, um, and so I, I think that's who I'll go with this week if I need the salary. If I can pay up a little bit, I might take the flyer on the Patriots' defense. They gotta be, like, embarrassed. That defense has been terrible, so... That's going to do it, though, guys. It's pretty much Jags, Pats, and Titans for me this week uh, on the defensive side. So I hope you all enjoyed, though. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys in the next uh, early, or I'll catch you guys in the next video. What is tomorrow? It's a random DFS video. It's going to be the Thursdays. It's going to be the showdown slate. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you all then. Peace out.